our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. For many commuters passing through Brussels or any other busy rail station, time spent working in the train means time saved in the office. These new gadgets on the carriages are bringing the office even closer to the commute. On the roof of this train, under this white dome, there is a satellite antenna. This antenna allows us to get Wi-Fi on board the train. The signal comes from the satellite to a server in one of the carriages. And that server is then linked to the different Wi-Fi access points situated in each carriage. The whole network of high-speed Thales trains connecting Brussels to Paris, Amsterdam, Cologne and Marseille has been equipped with satellite internet appliances. All passengers can now access the web on their laptops, tablet computers or cell phones. Getting online is easy, though not very cheap. A one-hour access card will cost you €6.50 at the train bar. That buys five megabits per second. That's fast enough to watch streaming video without any delays. You can use the internet just like you can at home or in the office on a train going at more than 300 kilometers per hour. You can surf the web, you can read your emails, you can even send presentations that you need to present in Brussels to your colleagues there and so on. It's an extension of the office, but it's inside the train. It's possible thanks to relatively recent technology involving telecom satellites, which now complement very effectively our terrestrial networks. Here's how it works. When running in open space, the system connects to the internet via a satellite antenna mounted on the roof. As the train moves, the antenna tracks the satellite 36,000 kilometers above, which communicates via the ground station to the internet. On board, the system communicates with the central server on the train. It's the electronic brain that controls parabolic antennas, manages wireless connections and switches to mobile networks if the satellite is unavailable, for example in tunnels. All the information passes through the server here. The server is linked to a terrestrial control station, which is always manned. There are people who follow how the Wi-Fi system is working at all times on all our trains. Passenger trains are just one example of how satellites can provide high-speed internet connection in places where cable is not an option. And that's also a challenge across the channel, deep in the Welsh countryside. The Brecon Beacons National Park offers a warm welcome, but until very recently, high-speed internet was non-existent in many local villages. are in that 0.02% of the population, as they say, that cannot get broadband. Um, our village, the whole village of Vellenvach, uh, which we're only three and a half miles outside of Brecon, uh, but we cannot get broadband. We're too far from the end of one of the uh, telephone exchanges and there's no plans by British Telecom to put the wire any farther. The difficulty with uh, reaching areas like here in Wales is actually not the cable, it's the digging of the trenches to achieve that, that cable. And that, that can be 100, 100 euros per, per metre done. So if you compare that with an, an upfront cost of maybe 400 euros to install a terminal, uh, we have equivalent price of four metres of, of, of ducting. Before, Julie had to rely on a dial-up connection. Emailing a photo was a time-consuming exercise, and some important commercial websites simply didn't work. Satellite broadband has provided high-speed connection for the hotel and has also become a cornerstone of a future village-wide wireless network. 
Luckily, one of um, our villagers um, had heard of a satellite broadband company and uh, he approached them and they said that they would be willing to provide satellites for the village, but they did need to have a business on board as well. So the village came to us and, sort of, and said, would you be interested in coming aboard? And that's how we ended up having the satellite installed. And the setup is no more complex than a satellite television set. Here we have the satellite uh, broadband equipment, which consists of the satellite dish, uh, the transceiver and the cabling, which runs indoor to the satellite modem. And the satellite modem provides the same type of services that you typically expect from your standard ADSL or cable broadband router. Unlike in the past, the modern equipment establishes a two-way satellite connection. The dish uh, sends and receives the satellite signal up to the satellite in geostationary orbit. So it's got 36,000 kilometers for the signal to travel up to the satellite and then back down to the ground station where the signal connects up to the, uh, the internet. In the past, satellite broadband services used a dial-up path for the return, which meant that upload speeds are uh, enabling users to do things such as uh, video and uh, teleworking contributions uh, functioned very slowly. The updated satellite broadband services both send and receive, so it enables a high-speed return path uh, for digital contribution. The monthly fee for the satellite subscription is comparable to that for more traditional cable or ADSL lines. That ensures affordable broadband coverage, however remote the location. The first communication satellites were used for phone calls, television was the next step, and now satellites are providing a universal internet solution. It's becoming more efficient with constant technological improvements and the planned launch of many new purpose-built satellites. I think that the focus in the future will be on increasing the bandwidth because we can never have enough means of communication. We always want a larger bandwidth. We've gone from a few hundred kilobits per second to now several megabits per second, even tens of megabits per second. And the satellite technology allows us to increase this capacity. And in the last few months and years, we've made tremendous progress. Euh, on a fait de très très grands progrès dans les, dans les tout derniers mois et dernières années.